This is John Cole with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. Well, it might be exciting for you to get to learn about what I got in my haul, but it wasn't a fun day for me. We're here at the end of the day. Literally after this, I might eat a small fruit meal and go to bed. Um, but it's been one of those days for me, right? So my day started at 5 a.m., got up, right? And uh, went to the wholesale produce terminal like I normally do on a Monday. Try to get some good deals, and I've gotten some amazing deals today. But aside from that point, the main issue that occurred is that I parked my car <laughs> where I normally park it. Every time I go to the terminal, I park in the same spot where there's spots. Um, and I go shopping, I come back, and my car is gone. I'm like, oh my god, my car is gone. This is totally insane. Like, what's going on? So I talk to the security guys. They're like, you can't park there. I'm like, there's no sign. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to argue with the security guys. They're just doing their job. I get it, you know. But it, it just like the whole thing just kind of sucked, right? So anyways, they, they handed me this, this little thing right here, tell me where I could pick up my car. And I'm like, how do I get there? I don't have a car. And I'm like carrying boxes of peppers, you know? And it's like, I don't have a cell phone, so I can't even call them. So it's like, luckily, the security guard let me use his phone to call the place. And I said, like, how do I get my car? They're like, well, you got to get to Hope Street. And I don't know where that is. <laughs> so the guy's like, I was like, can I walk there? He's like, yeah. I'm like, how long will it take? He said, 10 minutes, he said. He said, 10 minutes. I said, okay, no problem. How do I get there? He's like, okay, go down Olympic, and then when you get to uh, Washington, turn left, and then turn right on Hope. And I wrote that down in the back. So anyways, I get to Washington, I turn left, and then I figure out I'm going the wrong way. So I have to go the other way on Washington. And anyways, the fact of the matter is, an hour later, right, I turn on Hope Street and I see this. So you can see the picture. I'm like, oh my God, there's these people that um, live in tents. <laughs> What's up with this? Anyways, I got to the place and had to basically pay. You'll see on the picture there, it's like, you know, here's my invoice. Uh, $239.60 for parking at the wrong, wrong, parking at the place I normally park at at the produce terminal, right? And so, was I really mad? You know, is it, is it the security guy's fault that this happened to me? You know, and you know, what I want you guys to do in your life, right, is to take responsibility. I parked my car there, right? I take responsibility that I parked my car there. I take responsibility that was towed. That being said, <laughs> right, I had no notice, I had no idea that it would be towed, right? Number one, like, the spots are still there. You would think if it's no parking, they'd, like, use some black paint to paint over the spots so you could see there's no spots there. In addition, and I'll throw the picture up for you guys to see right now, you'll see where the security guard is standing. Like, literally, there's a there's a um, handicapped parking spot right there, and somebody who's parked in a handicapped spot, right? So I saw somebody parked there, and I've seen the spots next to it. I'm like, oh, good. Nobody's parked there. So I parked in the spot right next to the handicapped spot, and um, figuring it'd be all right, which is right next to the security booth. So, you know, I'm sure they saw me park there, and if they saw me park there, they should have said, hey, you can't park there. But no, they didn't do that, you know. Um, you'd think they'd kind of have a courtesy to do that, so um, they didn't, and, there and it wasn't like posted no parking where I parked, right? I had no idea it was going to park, that I was going to get towed if I parked there. That being said, I want you guys to be familiar with signs whenever you enter a private property. Let me throw that picture up, right? This is a sign as you enter the wholesale produce terminal. It has that sign and it said, you know, whatever, you could get towed. This is private park, park property if you park in the wrong spot. Well, I parked in the spot I always parked at never got towed. But this time I got towed. It really sucked. So... I'm making this video to save you guys $239.60. <laughs> if you go to the produce terminal in LA, right, stop at the gate and get a parking pass, <laughs> which looks like this. This is a parking pass. And ask the security guys where to park. They're happy to tell you guys, don't just go in there and park. Otherwise, you're going to get towed. Even if it doesn't say no parking, <laughs> you might think you're parking in an okay spot like I did, but you're going to get towed anyways. I mean, it may have been an illegal tow. Um, it said, this car has been parked over an hour at this address. And I don't think I personally 
was there for an hour because I just walked the front half of the terminal, which doesn't need to take me an hour, but I came back and my car was gone. So, I mean, like, I can't really do anything. I can't get mad at the towing guys because they're just doing their job. Can't get mad at the security guys. They're doing their job. It's just the system. And the system is, is messed up. And it may have been an unlawful tow because they actually didn't post where I parked that you can't park there. I mean, it wasn't a red zone. It, it looked like parking spot to me. What do you guys think? Anyways, enough about that. Stuff happens in life, and then you have to deal with it. I guess, you know, I always want to encourage you guys to look at the good at, about things, right? So in this situation, what was the good that came of it? Well, number one, I got, in, I got to see a tour of downtown Los Angeles by foot that I never got to see before. Because I got to literally walk one hour it took me. They said 10 minutes to walk. Maybe it's a 10 minute car ride, but it took me one hour to walk to pick up my car. So I really got good exercise. I got to see a, a nice sightseeing tour of downtown Los Angeles. I'd probably rather see sightseeing in Hawaii or something. And uh, in addition, you know, I'm making this video to hopefully prevent you guys from getting towed and having the same issues. I always want to, I always want to encourage you guys to actually look at the bright side of things and uh, more importantly, take responsibility. So anyways, enough about that. I got towed, it sucked. That being said, once I got towed and got back, I went back to shopping. I got a parking permit, parked where I want to, where I was supposed to, didn't get towed. Got some deals at the, at the new terminal and then also the old terminal. That being said, if you guys don't want to get towed, just go to the old terminal, right? There's parking in the middle. I've never seen them tow anybody. Park where you're supposed to, park in a designated car spot, don't park in a truck spot, or you will get towed. <laughs> but yeah, big cities, they just kind of suck for the towing. That's the third time in my life I've been towed. The first time, actually, I went to see a David Wolf talk in San Francisco, and I was like hanging that much over into a red zone, and they towed me, because in that one I had to walk a lot. And then the other time I parked, actually was down in LA, I was going to see a concert, and instead of paying for the parking at a parking garage like I was supposed to, I parked in like a shopping center lot. And as I was getting out of the event, I saw the car being hooked up and I ran over there and basically had to give the guy money <laughs> to like unhook me, which really sucked. And so, yeah, I don't want you guys to get towed. So, you know, pay attention when you before you park anywhere and know that it's your you parked the car there. You are responsible and take responsibility. All right. Enough about that. That being said, even though I got towed and had to pay like $239.60, I still, <laughs> shopping at the Wholesale Produce Terminal LA, I still saved money, right? And I made a spreadsheet today, I don't normally do this, just to prove to myself that I still saved money. And actually the total I saved over, if I bought all this stuff you guys are going to see uh, today at Whole Foods, if I bought it at Whole Foods at their regular retail prices, which means their posted prices for the produce um, and or uh, prices that I kind of like uh, have s seen in previous visits, although they didn't have the item there at this time, and um, compared to the prices I paid at the produce terminal. And so I saved literally $1,114.35 by shopping at the wholesale produce terminal uh, today. So even, even though I have to pay 200 extra bucks, I still made out like $800 a head. Uh, that being said, some of the produce is, you know, not the same quality that you might get at Whole Foods because they pick through all the bad stuff and they basically chuck it, you know, some of this stuff off the pick through, but some of it's actually pretty good quality. So anyways, I just want to do a, a haul video with you guys, share with you guys my deals, um, why I like the things I got, why I bought the things I got, and some of the prices I got, all right? So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is we got these guys, these are California grown uh, mangoes, right? I like the California grown mangoes because unlike mangoes that are imported, these are not hot water dipped or now they are actually um, irradiating certain mangoes that are being imported. So I have seen mangoes from like India. Um, those are pretty rare. Those are being irradiated now. Um, certain mangoes from Mexico are also being irradiated and I prefer to have my mangoes not irradiated or hot water treated, although I will eat hot water treated mangoes, which are the majority of the ones I normally get. That being said, I love the California mangoes because they're not hot water dipped and uh, generally they're a little bit uh, riper. Uh, these are the Keats, so these ones will be green, um, you know, uh, and still be ripe, ripe, and that's fine. Uh, these guys happen to be rock hard, so that's a good thing. Uh, these guys, because they are starting to color up a little bit, uh, they will ripen up, so I'm just going to let them sit out um, for about a week or two 
and by then they should start getting soft and uh, be ripe and ready to eat. Now the crazy thing is Whole Foods sell these guys for $3.99 each. Of course these are the smaller count. Uh, they would probably sell the larger ones for $3.99 each. Um, they're available now, um, so check them out if you haven't already. Um, that being said, I'm going to say these guys, are maybe if they're selling at Whole Foods, maybe like two bucks each. Um, so yeah, the savings on these guys for the mangoes, for all three cases, I saved basically $41.58 by shopping at the Wholesale Produce Terminal. The next produce item I got, I basically got a case of uh, eight. And uh, these are actually just uh, like some cantaloupes, but these are not any old cantaloupes. These are actually called the uh, Organic Sugar Kiss Cantaloupes. I've never had these, a new variety. And, uh, you know, these guys at Whole Foods, if you buy, eat, buy them by the each at my local Whole Foods, are selling for $3.99 per each cantaloupe. And so my savings was $27.92 by buying them at the Wholesale Produce Terminal. So most of the things I got at the produce terminal were organic. This was an exception. I got some just some standard pineapples. Generally these pineapples, I'll use these for like uh, juicing. So I like the small ones because I don't want to put too much pineapple, but I like to use the whole thing in one shot when I juice some uh, vegetables up uh, from my garden and some other root vegetables. But anyways, I kind of estimated Whole Foods. These guys might run, sell for like maybe a dollar ninety-nine. I'm kind of guessing. And uh, in here there's uh, 14 pieces. So my overall savings for the pineapples was, uh, let's see here, $26.86 by buying them wholesale. All right, so the next case I got, it's about 26 pounds of organic plums here. Um, some of them, you know, might have to get picked through or whatever. But basically, um, I don't like eating plums too much, but I'm going to freeze dry the plums. So freeze dried plums are kind of insane. I love the texture so much. At Whole Foods, maybe organic plums would sell for around $2.99 a pound. And even though I got towed, <laughs> I still saved about $67.47 by buying them at the produce terminal. All right, so the next thing I got is I got a case of organic dull bananas. This is uh, basically 40 pounds, and I saved like $14 over buying them at Whole Foods. That's not as big of a savings as some of the other items. Um, generally, bananas are priced fairly affordable at Whole Foods. So if you want the cheapest food at Whole Foods, it's like you're not going to get ripped off on. <laughs> get the bananas. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, these are a really nice shape. No cold burn, nice and yellow. Most of these are going to get uh, frozen to use in smoothies. Or I, end up, I might end up freeze drying some as well. Freeze dried bananas are quite good. All right, so the next case I got, I got some uh, organic purple carrot bunches at the Wholesale Produce Terminal. Normally I'd get these actually at the Hollywood Farmer's Market, but at the Hollywood Farmer's Market this week, they didn't have any, so it was kind of sad. So I had to get these um, at the terminal, the wholesale distributor actually. And so uh, this box, 24 count of uh, bunched carrots. If I had to buy a bunch at Whole Foods, which they don't even sell the purple only, they sell only the rainbow mix, it would be $3.49 a bunch. Because I got them at the wholesale produce terminal, I calculated that I am saving... Uh, $55.26 by buying them wholesale. So that's uh, definitely a good savings for me. I'm going to basically take all the tops off uh, and then put these in plastic bags and they're going to store easily uh, for a month in my fridge until I get to juice them. All right, so the next deal I got in the Wholesale Produce Terminal are these grapes. And how do these grapes look for you when you pull out a bunch, right? These look pretty good. Sometimes you guys buy them depending on where you live in the country and they look this bad. And these aren't really that bad. There's a few bad spots. There's a few bad grapes in here but these are in pretty good shape these are organic green grapes not the super highest quality I did I did taste test them and they're they're not gonna bricks out super high but they're organic nonetheless and if you bought these guys at Whole Foods it'd run you about three dollars and ninety nine cents a pound unless you're a prime member this week in which case it's two dollars and forty nine cents a pound in the store near me um, that being said I'm basing the price on three ninety nine because that's the normal everyday price if it's not on sale so based on that price, based on the price I got and um, 40 pounds of grapes here, uh, that means I have a total savings of $155.60. So that's totally insane. Um, basically, I like eating grapes. They're easy, convenient travel foods. You know, should you be traveling to work or taking a bus, just wash these and just pop them in your mouth. Um, a lot of these guys I might end up juicing. Maybe like uh, grapes with kale from my garden. Uh, juiced up or honestly what I'm going to do with a lot of these guys I'm going to do freeze-dried grapes so you got to cut the grape in half freeze-dried and these guys are like the best candy 
So yeah, still saving a lot of money at the wholesale produce terminal, just not saving as much because I had to pay for my car tow. Alright, so the next fruit I got is something I don't often get because normally they're super expensive and if you go to Whole Foods to buy these dragon fruits, these are not organic, but they're not aerated like many um, dragon fruits that may be imported or that are imported from Vietnam. Uh, California grown uh, dragon fruits are not aerated, neither are these guys. Uh, these guys are actually grown in uh, Nicaragua, I believe. Yep. And uh, they don't have to radiate them, so that's really cool. Uh, same thing with Ecuador. Ecuador um, cactus fruits don't need to be aerated as far as I'm aware as well. So if you guys bought these at Whole Foods, it's $9.99 or 10 bucks a pound for dragon fruit. Uh, that being said, I got three cases, which is a total of uh, 30 pounds. And based on the price I got it for, over the Whole Foods price, I saved the most money, especially with the specialty produce here, the dragon fruits, I saved a total of $239.70. That's totally insane. I mean, that just literally just picking up these dragon fruits saved me the money of my car tow. That being said, <laughs> I wouldn't normally buy dragon fruits for $10 a pound. But yeah, if you notice, my hands are still a bit purple. Um, I ate like three of them, so that's why I'm missing a few over here for uh, breakfast today. And uh, a lot of these guys, they got to go instantly in the fridge. I'm going to store them at 45 degrees, very important. And then, uh, you know, some of them have some minor bad spots, but that doesn't really affect the inside. You can see some, like, mold. And so I, I picked through, like, about, I don't even know, 60 cases to get the best three. <laughs> so it took me a while. But that's kind of, like, fun to go on the produce terminal. I love going on the produce terminal despite getting towed. It's still, like, for me, it's like I'm a kid in a candy store. And yeah, some of these dragon fruits, I don't know if I'll be able to eat them all that fast uh, before they go off. They should save pretty good in the fridge. Uh, but I'm also going to do freeze-dried dragon fruit. I love having a freeze-dryer. It almost makes me kind of like buy more uh, produce on one level. That being said, I do need to say something here. I need to say that I used to shop for two people. So, um, you know, my ex-girlfriend used to live with me and she, I know I would buy for produce for two. Uh, we broke up. She moved out. So now I'm just buying produce for one person. So I'm like trying to like not buy quite as much as I normally do. I normally spend like maybe $400, $500 for two people. But now this trip I spent like, I don't know, $244.50 on all the produce uh, that you guys are seeing today at the produce terminal. As you guys can see next, you guys can only see up to here, but actually I have even more over on the edges. You guys can't see those, but basically I got five boxes of bell peppers, right? And if you go to Whole Foods, to buy organic bells, they're gonna charge you $5.99 a pound, right? And so at the wholesale produce terminal, I got them for significantly less. You know, some of these are in decent shape. Some of them, you know, will need to get used really soon. So I have a few, you know, spots that aren't quite good, but all the ones that are not super good, they'll get juiced and then I'll drink the juice or I'll actually use the juice to make like a pepper soup, one of my favorite recipes uh, that I like to do. And then uh, the other things is I could store the ones that are in better shape at the right temperature, which is between 44 and 50 degrees. And uh, I'll post a link down below to that video to show you guys how I store all the fruit that I get. Every fruit needs to be stored at a different temperature, so I try to accommodate that as the best as possible so that it stores the best for the longest. <laughs> and that being said, some of these peppers I'll be able to keep easily three weeks, maybe a little bit more. And of course, uh, if they start going bad, then before they go bad, then I'm just going to cut them up and freeze them. And then when I have room in my freeze dryer, I can take the frozen peppers into the freeze dryer. Then it sucks out the moisture under vacuum. So it preserves like 97% of the nutrition in these peppers. And I want to remind you guys, peppers are probably one of the most highest vitamin C um, non-sweet fruits out there. And we should be getting regular influxes of vitamin C. It's very important for us to make nice collagen so you could have nice skin and also for basically anti-aging purposes. So yeah, that's why, I mean, I love peppers. I didn't get any tomatoes this trip. I got the peppers, they're much more valuable. Plus I know that in general, peppers sell for a lot more than tomatoes. And by buying peppers instead of tomatoes, I'm gonna save a lot more. So because I bought these at the wholesale produce terminal, despite getting towed, <laughs> I still saved plenty of money. I saved uh, $283.45 uh, based on my calculation, based on buying 55 pounds of organic peppers. All right, so the last thing I got, actually one of my favorite fruits and one of the most nutritious fruits in the entire world, not these guys, it's this guy, the purple or red tunas or cactus fruits. 
Um, you'll see rarely Whole Foods might sell cactus fruits in their specialty tropical fruit section. You know, I saw it once in like, I think I was in uh, Houston. Um, $2.99 a pound for the cactus fruits at Whole Foods. It's the worst place, in my opinion, you guys could ever buy the cactus fruits. Get them in a Mexican market, they're a lot cheaper. Um, check the link down below to a video I did specifically on cactus fruits so you guys could know the benefits, how to open them, how to pick them, all that good stuff. I had a nice episode on those. But anyways, because I bought these at the Wholesale Produce Terminal and not Whole Foods, if they did sell them, you know, sometimes they don't even have them, um, I calculated that I saved $202.04 based on their $2.99 a pound. And basically I got uh, 38 pounds times 2 on there. So yeah, definitely uh, saved lots of money. And I was able to basically go to the vendors that actually had the nicest looking cactus fruit. So these are nice and dark. The whole case is pretty much ripe. And on this side, you know, I got nice, uh, actually, uh, yellow ones instead of the green ones. And they're a little bit soft. So these are actually probably going to be really sweet. And so, yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it for this episode, you know. I mean, I had a, definitely a bummer day. We're here at the end of the day. I'm just, like, so, like, dragging my feet. I've been up since 5. I had to drop walk to get my car from the tow company and then I had to like go back and produce shop more that set me back an hour then I went and got like plant starts and uh, and then basically had to drive back I'm stuck in traffic on the way back it took five hours to drive back um, but yeah overall it's a good day because I'm still alive and I want you guys to appreciate what you guys have in your life despite getting towed despite you know being set back and stuck in traffic right you know, I'm grateful for what I'm ha I have. I'm grateful for that I'm able to share with you guys what I do on YouTube. You know, I'm grateful for the people that I ran into today when I was at Costco in uh, Victorville filling out my gas and went inside to use the bathroom and look at their produce. I, one of my viewers uh, saw me, hey, are you John from Growing Your Greens? And I just opened up my jacket and I'm wearing my Growing Your Green shirt. Hey, if you guys want to get a cool Growing Your Green shirt, you could help support me, help me get my videos edited. Link is down below, compassion-tees.com. You get a cool or get a t-shirt. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, so I saw a lady there, and then actually I saw a guy at the produce terminal who was shopping, and actually he saw my video on the produce terminal and was shopping there partly because of me. You know, he's like, wow, I got to meet you, and like, thanks so much. And, you know, I met somebody the other day that, like, shops at the produce terminal. They save a lot of money, you know, because of me. And it's like, I just want you guys to be able to do this diet if you are able, right? and shopping at your local produce terminal hopefully if you live in los angeles or even the surrounding area you know i drive four to five hours to get the produce terminal like i try to do that once a month but i miss several months um you know it's definitely worth the trip i have three fridges where all this stuff will be stored at different temperatures um once again link is down below for how to do that and i want to encourage you guys if you guys live in san diego la you know anywhere is near there you know um it's worth the trip, right? If you don't, if you want to know how to do it, check the links down below. I'll show you guys how to do it. Make sure you get a parking pass, and and figure out where you should park so you don't get towed. I mean, I'm just I'm grateful for that that I got a lot of cool produce, and the big challenge now is that I actually got to all put it up and get it in the fridges so they it stays uh, fresher for longer. Um, you always want to pay attention to the post harvest practices and handling practices of the produce. So you want to keep it at the proper temperature. You know, and if you just keep this out overnight because you're too lazy to put it in the fridge like you're supposed to, that could significantly shorten the life um, of the produce before it goes bad. So that's I'm staying up and uh, doing that. But first, I think I'm going to eat a melon. Anyway, that's the end of this episode today. If you guys enjoyed this episode, want me to do more haul videos like this, sharing you guys a story, telling you guys what's going on in my life, hey, give me a thumbs up. You know, that'd be really cool. Um, also, be sure to share this video with somebody else and maybe inspire them on how they could save lots of money at the Wholesale Produce Terminal um, and, uh, and not parking in the wrong spot. <laughs> and also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on any new and upcoming episodes that come out every three, uh, five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. And uh, finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 500 episodes on this channel teach you guys all aspects and how you guys can eat more fresh fruits and vegetables so you guys could live and have the best health ever. I have visited several produce terminals around the country. They're not in every city, but some major cities have them. And in many cases, but not all, just the public can go there and shop. Just make sure you park in the right spot. All right. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. Until then, remember, keep eating your fresh foods. And